Hey guys, it's Diana here and I am here um, to do some a neckband and um, waistband and cuffs with you guys, okay? So what better pattern to use than the going home sweater? And one thing that I love about the going home sweater, not only is it beautiful, um, but it's also, if I play my cards right, I don't have to hem. I can cuff my sleeves, I can band my shirt, and I and I have a band on my top, so no reason to even pull out my sewing machine. All I need is my serger. Now, if you don't have a serger, or you just have a sewing machine, then obviously you just use that, but that's the great thing about this pattern. But anyway, I know that some people get confused when it comes to bands and stuff like that, so I figured we'd go ahead and do a video on that, and so we're gonna get started. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and do our neck band, and here's my neck band. Let me make sure, because I have my neckband, I have my waistband, and I have my cuffs. Okay, so here's my neckband, and I'm putting it right side up, facing up. So then I'm gonna put my other side right on top of it, so we're folding it in half, and right sides together, and here, on, this is the wrong side, I'm gonna go ahead and serge the top, so that it's a continuous uh, loop circle thingy. Okay, and after I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and open it up, right side. Now I'm gonna fold wrong sides together to hide that seam, and I want my outer uh, part to be seen, so you can see the outer. So I'm just folding it right in half, and some fabric will be so much easier than others. This is a very flimsy fabric, so it's easy, but it also isn't easy. I mean, it's like it's like a little bit of both. Yes, I just licked my finger. Sometimes I, it's like a book, you know, you have to kind of, uh, I need to get some of that stuff that sewers use because that's disgusting. This is for me, so don't worry. It's my own saliva that's going on my own clothing. Uh, okay, so now that it's folded like a hot dog, what I usually do is I go ahead and steam it so it has a nice crease right there so that's easier for it not to uh split apart now like i said this fabric is really flimsy so it keeps kind of coming apart so we're gonna have to bear with that okay so now i'm going to quarter my band um because when you put your band on you want to make sure that it's even in all sides and it's not like wonky on one part and and tight on the other so you want to quarter it so how you quarter it is here's it's already folded in half because here's my pin where my seam is in the back so it's folded in half and we're going to the front and we're gonna mark it. How I mark it is I do a little notch, just with my scissors, I just cut a tiny little piece off, just tiny, you can't even barely see it. And then I pin it. The reason why I cut that little piece off is because sometimes when you're sewing, you're serging your band on, you remove your pins before you get to the part where it's supposed to meet up with the shirt. And if you don't have a mark, then sometimes it's kind of hard to tell and so I noticed that when I when I go ahead and, and pinch that little notch off I can see it and can match it up better even if I don't have a pin and it ends up a more even band if that makes any sense okay so now I'm gonna go ahead and meet up the two pins in the middle and go out to the sides and those will be my quarters so I'm gonna mark those sides as well again I'm just notching them um, just barely there and when I serge it on or sew it on, I will eat that little patch. So you won't even see, it won't even show on your band. It's like within my uh, my seam allowance, okay? Now, for the shirt, you have to quarter your shirt as well because your sleeves are not your quarter points. Now, this is a raglan type of shirt, so um, your sleeves are different, but no matter what sleeve you're using, you will match the seams of your sleeve now this one's got two seams because obviously being the raglan style, but most uh, shirts will have the one uh, seam at the top. Wait, let me see. Yeah, they'll have the seam right here, the shoulder seams. So you would match those shoulder seams together. And then you would go out to the back. You match those shoulder seams together. You go out to the back and I go ahead and mark it. And then you do the same thing, match them and go up to the front and that's your front so now you got your front and your back now the sleeves are not your half point because the sleeves come forward more on the on the front so what you need to do is you are going to match those two notches front and back 
and go out to the side and that will be your side your quarter point okay and then you're gonna do the same thing for the other side and this will give it a way more even look of your neck band if you just try to like eyeball it it's it probably won't work out too well okay so now I've got my shirt and my shirt is right side out Ooh, that's gonna be pretty right side out and I'm gonna match up my pins with my um, notches if you pinned your shirt if you didn't notch it if you just pinned it so you just match pin to pin and I start always start in the back where that seam is so my seam is on the back and what you're gonna do is you're gonna basically put your uh, uh, band neck band over your shirt um, so uh, here I am. This is the front of my neck band and I'm attaching it to the fr uh, to the right side of my shirt So the right sides are touching. Okay, so now I'm gonna go to the second notch and I'm gonna go ahead and match that up with my second uh, My quarter point Like I said this fabric is a little wonky It's very silky so it's moves around a little bit okay so now here we go to the front and we're matching those raw edges the raw edges and the last one so I went all the way around to my four quarter points okay so now I'm gonna show you that's how my band is it's on the outside of my shirt not on the inside on the outside and I smash up to the little notches now how I sew my band is I always start where the seam is in the back and when I put it in I always put the neck band facing up because the neck band is the shortest part um, and I want to know how much it's gonna eat off my neck band I don't want to if I can't see my neck band I don't know if it's eating too much or too little and then I will end up with a really small neck band and that's not what I want or smaller in one spot longer on the other I don't want that so I always face it up my neck band I catch it on my serger and I grab the next the section where the pin is with these two fingers right here I grab my pins my pin and my section I make sure that they're both actually with this one and this one these two right here I make sure that it's even I pull it right put them right next to each other all three and then I use my other two fingers to grab my fabric higher up so I use my thumb and my ring finger and I grab it my pen and then I use my index no wait a minute yeah then I use my index and my other finger index and my other finger to grab it higher up if that makes sense I don't, I don't know if you can see it right there so that way it's easier for it not to move and then I watch it and I go And then I do the same thing on the next quarter point. I grab my pin. You have to stretch just a little bit. Stretch your band just a little bit usually. And then I... heard that is it's thundering outside it's not too bad but every once in a while there's a little thunder okay next one again grab in with the two fingers making sure the raw edges match up and go. now I always make sure I'm not looking at the band as much I'm looking at where the edge my edge of my fabric is going on my sewing machine or on my serger um, you don't watch the needles, you watch actually the measurement on your, uh, how much seam allowance you're supposed to give it. Um, that way you stay kind of even. The needles move too fast. If you're looking at that, you get, you could get lost. And then usually I always leave a tail out at the end and then I use a, uh, like one of these big needles and tuck it in. Um, you can just tuck it in or you can, if you like to, if you prefer you can do um, a top stitch over it or whatever. But here's my neck band. Okay. Let's see if you see it closely. It's attached. Okay, so that was easy. Now, next part is my cuffs. Now, I'm gonna do the same thing to my cuffs. Um, so here's my cuff. 
one of my cuffs and um, right side up out then I'm gonna fold the right sides together and I'm gonna sew that long edge on the one side first to make it a continuous round and with this fabric I have to be very careful because like I said it's very Okay, and after it's sewn together, I'm going to turn it right side out and I'm going to pin at the corners where the seam is and then if you want, you don't have to, but I, a lot of times I like to do this uh, because with... Um, with this one, I don't I don't have to, but usually when you're doing hoodies or when you're doing different types of fabrics, if you're doing um, one fabric is uh, a little bit more stretchy than the other or something like that, you might want to go ahead and quarter your band just as you did earlier. Just like we did with the neck band, you would just quarter your band. But if you're not quartering, you just grab your arm band and you fit it, you fit your uh, cuff into your arm band with the raw edges at the top. And you match up, I match up with that seam is. And pin. And then you match up all the way around. So this one, they are, uh, they're the same pretty much. So all I'm doing is I'm just stretching it out a little bit. And then I'm going to go ahead and pin it. Just at the halfway mark. And that's it. Now when you're serging, once again, you need to make sure that you've got all three of your fabrics on there because it happens all the time that my fabric will slip and then I have to go back and just serge over it, which is fine, but if you can do it right the first time, then that's even better. So I'm just serging your three edges together. Again, I leave a, a little tail and then I'll tuck that in later. There's my cuff. Neat. Now I'll do the same thing with my other cuff, but we're going to go ahead and move on to the waistband. Okay? Now, on some patterns, the waistband will have you cut two, and sometimes you'll have like a, a long waistband already put together. But um, if you have two, the first thing you need to do is put one right side up and one right side down right on top of it so you're gonna match this the raw edges at the end so that you can make it one continuous circle just like you did with your neck band and your arm bands and then we're gonna serge those two raw edges you can do a zigzag stitch if you're doing it on your tongue And I don't worry about leaving a tail on this one because it's going to get tucked in when you sew it onto your uh, the bottom of your sweater anyway. Okay, now I'm going to turn it right side out and fold it like a hot dog just like I did with everything else. Pin the uh, seams. So this will already have your two side seams on there and they'll blend in with your side seams of your shirt so it won't won't be like oh I have an extra seam you don't have an extra seam you just have the continuous seam of your sides your side seams so after you do that and it's folded in half you can go ahead and steam if you want but like I said this one is a really flimsy fabric doesn't really need steaming so I'm gonna fold it right on top of each other those two pins are right on top of each other and I'm gonna go out to the sides and those are gonna be my front and back because I'm gonna use obviously the seams are gonna be my um, uh, quarter point my side points I'm sorry my um, my side seams so then I want my front and my back okay 
So here's my shirt and I'm going to put it, here's my bottom of my shirt, put it right on the table and I'm going to match up those edges. Oh, first I didn't even find my, my front and back of my shirt. I'm going to meet those two side seams and I'm going to go to the front and then I'm going to go to the back, front and my back. And then I'm going to go ahead and meet, remember to meet those right sides together. My shirt is inside out. No, right side out. Sorry, I said that wrong. I'm trying to think what I said. I always get confused. The right side is out, and so I'm matching those points. The quarters and the halves. And I... I had pinned both of my sides of my shirts together. Okay, so here's my sides, my front, and now my back. Ah. Wait a minute. Where's my front? Stay together. Here's my back. It look pretty fabric, but really flimsy. Okay, we can start again. We can start. Go ahead and start at that, at one of the seams. Making sure, like you did with your neckband, that you're grabbing all three layers. I think I noticed a gap on my neckband earlier because I didn't grab all my um, sides together. But I'll check that out, and if there is, then I'll just go over it really slowly. Okay, here we are. Making sure you grab all your fabrics. So especially with this fabric, it is so flimsy. And you think you have all three fabrics and then you don't. So you have to be very careful. my next one I was just checking it to make sure I grabbed it Again, leaving a little bit of a tail so that I can pin it. Okay, here it is. My waistband is done, which means my shirt is done. Cute, huh? So easy, so simple. Like I said, if there is a spot that you missed, then you would go back and fold it over again let's let's fix this little spot right here you would go back and fold it over again and i would go right over that same spot slowly and i'll still do the neckband facing up because i don't want to lose my neckband so i would grab it pull it a little bit hold it and I wouldn't even give it a seam allowance at all. I would just go right over the same pay, the same spot. Okay. Fixed. There it is. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Um, please message me or put, post a message comment below if you have any questions about anything I did. If there's anything else you'd like to see. Um, 
if you make whenever you make your makes please post them over to ellie and mac we love to see all your makes we love to see them we love to see the pictures either on the facebook page ellie and mac's facebook page or on the instagram page um so i hope you have a great rest of your day and i'll see you next time bye